Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, or CRPS, is the topic. CRPS is basically a neuropathic pain uh, that can happen in a chronic uh, state. CRPS1 involves uh, pain that occurs after bone injury, and then CRPS2 happens after there's some sort of nerve injury. Let's talk a little bit about uh, CRPS type 1. Typical scenario is that a woman, because it's uh, two to three times more common in the females, has some sort of uh, injury. Most commonly on clinical vignettes, they talk about a crush injury, usually the lower extremity, lower limb. And then uh, some months later, she presents with the signs and symptoms of CRPS1, which, are, which is this chronic pain that doesn't seem to go away. And I'll go into the signs and symptoms a little bit later. But that's the typical scenario. Now, before I talk about the symptoms, I want to talk a little bit about the pathophysiology of why this happens. What exactly is going on here? Um, why does somebody continuously have pain months after the injury occurred? Well, there's sort of this positive feedback cascade or loop that tends to occur. First, you have the injury, which is the initial event. And then what happens is the brain, in particular the sympathetic nervous system, responds. And it responds by releasing a, a neurotransmitter. And the neurotransmitter that we're referring to is norepinephrine. And norepinephrine, what happens is, as many of you know, it causes uh, some effects on the body. And one of those effects is vasoconstriction of the vessels. And that vasoconstriction actually leads to vessel spasm. The vessels start to spasm and that leads to pain. And it can also, in addition to leading to pain, it can also uh, lead to inflammation. And then once you have pain, uh, it's kind of like it goes back into the same uh, cycle where the brain senses it again and again releases norepinephrine so this just keeps going round and round and it's a pretty uh, tragic uh, occurrence if it does happen to someone so let's talk a little bit about the symptoms fortunately the symptoms are pretty uh, distinct especially if they're put all together pain but in, in in particular, you have this burning pain, and that's commonly um, talked about on uh, clinical vignettes. Then you have these cutaneous changes, the cutaneous referring to the, the skin. The skin can be red. The skin can have an increased temperature. The skin can be hyperhidrotic, meaning it's there's sweat. And then they can also be edema. So I encourage you to look up a picture of uh, CRPS1 uh, online and you'll see what this looks like. And then also the range of motion can be uh, decreased. And then another thing that happens in CRPS is that you have the psychological um, uh, presentation, psychological distress, because the it's such a unbelievably tragic uh, and uh, debilitating condition. The person can develop depression and can also feel angry because oftentimes it's a very difficult uh, diagnosis. So how do you diagnose it? Well, other than the clinical criteria, which is the way the patient presents, patient presents with their history and their symptoms, there is uh, some very key uh, things that you need to look for. And those two things that you need to look for are allodynia and hyperalgesia. And I'll explain what each of these are. And to be honest, this is probably going to be, by you know most standards, done by a pain specialist. You know, it's probably uh, something that a patient has gone to their regular doctor and then has been... Uh, referred. So allodynia basically means that the patient has pain 
from stimuli that normally don't uh, cause pain. So I'll give you an example, which are nor not normally painful. So for example, uh, an example of uh, allodynia is you take a Q-tip and you just brush the Q-tip along the patient's skin. And normally, that's not going to cause any pain to anybody. But with person with CRPS, it will. So that's an example of allodynia, pain from stimuli which are not normally painful. Now we get to hyperalgesia. What's that? Well, this is basically a condition where the patient has increased pain to a painful stimuli. And I'll explain what that means. So for example, let's say a normal person, you uh, prick their skin with a pin. And you say, well, how much pain did that cause you? And they say, well, on a scale from 1 to 10, it was about 3 out of 10. Then you take a patient with a CRPS, and you do the same pin prick. And then you say, well, how much did it hurt you on a scale from 1 to 10? And they'll say, whoa, that was really painful. So that's what's happening here. Increased pain due to a painful stimuli. That's another characteristic of CRPS. And then one final thing about uh, diagnosis is that, interestingly, there is a, a procedure that a pain doctor can do called a sympathetic nerve block. And this is definitely a very specialized procedure. This is actually used as a diagnostic tool. And the reason is because if you do this for the patient and the symptoms of the pain are relieved, then that actually is diagnostic of CRPS. So it's one of those things that's used for diagnosis and used for treatment also. So if a uh, pain specialist uh, you know, has a suspicion of CRPS, this can be used as diagnosis and, and treatment as well. So that brings me to the treatment, the uh, sympathetic nerve block. And then the next one are the uh, pain medicines, in particular the opioid analgesics. And then the third and final is an absolute must, and that is physical therapy. So these, these are the three of the fundamental aspects of the treatment of CRPS. So let's take a look at some vignettes. A 45-year-old woman experiences a crush injury of her right lower extremity. Some months later, she presents to a pain specialist complaining of burning pain in her affected extremity. She states that when she feels stressed, the pain gets worse. She also states that all this has made her depressed and frustrated. On physical exam, the specialist notices that she has hyperhidrotic skin, which is visibly red, edematous, and warm to touch. Her range of motion is also limited. The specialist decides to try a sympathetic nerve block, as this can be used for diagnosis and treatment of the suspected condition the patient has developed. After administering the regional sympathetic blockade, her pain is relieved. Which of the following conditions does she most likely have? Well, this is a classic clinical vignette that encompasses all aspects of CRPS. So it's very nice. And um, E would be the right answer, of course. And then finally, several months after sustaining a crushing injury to his arm, a patient complains bitterly about constant burning, agonizing pain in that arm that does not respond to the usual analgesic medications. The pain in his arm is aggravated by the slightest stimulation of the area, such as rubbing from the shirt sleeves. The arm is cold, cyanotic, and moist, but is not swollen. Pulses at the wrists are normal. The neurologic function of the three major nerves is intact. Which of the following is most appropriate to provide diagnostic confirmation of the nature of the problem and eventual therapy? It was a very good question. I like this part here. Um, slightest stimulation of the area such as rubbing from shirt sleeves. Now that is an example of which one? Allodynia. Because remember allodynia is pain from stimuli which are not normally painful. So normally if you have rubbing from your shirt sleeves, it's not going to cause you any pain. But in a person with CRPS, something like that will. So that's a perfect example of allodynia. So this patient has all the features of CRPS, and you want to do 
something that will diagnose it. And remember, a sympathetic nerve block will do that. It will help you diagnose it because if the patient's pain is relieved, then that clinches the diagnosis. And interestingly, it also treats the CRPS. Uh, provide the diagnostic confirmation is basically what they're asking, and they're also even telling you that it will be an eventual therapy. And the answer to this question would be E, sympathetic nerve block.